Hey Eugenia, it's Dustin. <laughs> so um, today I kind of wanted to do a part two of the um, ways to help with anxiety video. Um, there's just uh, so much to fit into the last one. So I'm like, well, I'm just gonna do a part two. <laughs> so um, I had a bunch of extra stuff that I wanted to talk about that is just important. So I took a couple of things from the last video I'm gonna talk about it in here, just to kinda, you know, even it out a little bit. So um, the first video is not way too long, the second video is not, you know, shorter, but. So yeah, just gonna do part two today, and uh, yeah, I hope you're liking the, uh, the uh, mental health video here that I'm, doing I'm just hoping it helps in some way you know because I just think it's so important because I use this stuff all the time and helps me tremendously so so let's get started with part two so one of the first things I want to talk about is actually meditation um, I think meditation is a great thing to do every day like um, setting setting time aside each day even if it's like 10 minutes you know i'd say the average is like 10 or 20 minutes to uh do a meditation session you know and um <clears throat> it's just a way to each day to get your brain to calm down i guess um you know just setting that uh quiet time where you know nothing is on everything is totally quiet um in whatever room you're sitting in um, you know, the window can be open or you can have all the lights off and it can be dark, but you either want to be sitting in a chair like this and putting your hands just like this on the armrests like this and your feet flat on the floor. And, um, yeah, I just, you can also, um, do, you know, sitting on the floor cross-legged and um, putting your hands on your knees and sitting upright. That A lot of people do that too, but as long as you're sitting upright like this, that's probably the best way to do it. You know, and you're just going to want to close your eyes and um, divert your attention to your breath, to the inward and outward sound of your breath going in and out and the rising and falling of your chest in and out. And you can do a breathing exercise while you do it if you want, you know, you can, but it's just to keep that rhythm of breathing in and out and diverting your attention to your breath and the rise and fall of your chest. And when you're doing this, um, thoughts because our brains are very active <laughs> so that's why this helps with anxiety so much is you know your thoughts just create you know kind of this world sometimes it can be a little bit of a chaotic world <laughs> in our minds and it keeps us anxious so by doing the meditation and calming your brain down calming the thoughts down it's just it's going to make your well-being and your um, your anxiety just calm down big time if you practice this every day. So that, that's what I recommend anyway. And the thoughts will come in and out of your mind. Um, it's kind of like when you're laying in bed waiting to go to sleep, you know. Your brain is active and thinking about the day and processing stuff. So by diverting your attention to your breath and the rise and fall of your chest, you know, you, your brain can only uh, focus on one thing at a time. So um, <laughs> by diverting the attention to that, you know, it's going to, you know, calm down all of those repetitive thoughts that are ruminating in the background, brain chatter and stuff like that. So if you're sitting here doing that technique, meditating, a thought might come into your mind and you're just going to see, you're just going to observe the thought and say thought and just let it pass, you know. So your mind might keep wanting to wander to stuff. You know, but uh, every time it does, you're not going to force it away from it and you're not going to go towards it. You're just going to observe what it's doing. So it might it might go to some topic and you're just going to, you know, like um, 
say you say you went to the store and were trying on clothes or something and like talking to somebody so you're just gonna be like you're just gonna be like oh talk about my outing today and then you're just gonna let it pass through you know or um, yeah anything you know any topic you're just gonna label it really quick and you're just gonna let it pass through or you can just say thought just a thought and then divert your attention gently back to the rising and falling of your chest and the sound of your breathing so that's what you're just kind of going to kind of want to do so it, it takes a lot of practice <laughs> to, to do that but uh, i try and do it before bed you know at least 15 minutes before bed lights out just sitting here like this and breathing and when a thought comes in I, I just usually go oh that thought and it just kind of passes you know just let it pass naturally you know like I said don't push it away or pull a thought towards you or try and think of stuff you're just gonna let your brain naturally do its thing and it'll get calmer the longer you sit there and do it so so yeah that's one technique that I have I don't know I've been doing for a long time <laughs> on and off. Sometimes I do it more than others and then I kind of slack off a little, but it's good to try and do it every day because that, that'll that just get your brain in that reset, calmer state. So, so one of the first topics I want to go to, Eugenia, is actually overthinking. Um, <laughs> overthinking things is something that I have done for quite a long time, you know, and I know that's probably the anxiety coming out. So, yeah, it's like I try and stay away from the overthinking of things, you know, because like we'll read stuff over and over again or maybe go through things in our mind over and over that, you know, maybe somebody, something someone said or, or you know, or it's like something we wrote or something we said, you know, and that's kind of like the overthinking it kind of you know over and over with the subject and it just uh, you start to get really anxious and everything because you think that you're trying to solve something or you want to make sure that you did it right something like that at least that's how I think of it so trying to stay away from that overthinking it's it's kind of hard because it's like you want to analyze your words or analyze someone else's words or analyze an event that happened you know but uh, it's like it's good to just process at one time or probably no more than two times and then just let it go so it's like you have to know that you know you said things right you did things right and you just have to like know and have faith in yourself that you know you you did the right thing you said the right thing you know there's no point in going over it and over it and wondering what the other person is thinking all the time even though i know that's hard to do you know what are they thinking you know and you know what if they're thinking this what if they're thinking that and it's like you gotta stop the track so it's like once again it's like going to you know being aware of when the overthinking comes up so it's like I try and be aware of as soon as it, as soon as that starts it's like oh I'm overthinking it I'm just gonna let it go I've already thought about it so I'm just letting that overthinking be so once again like I was talking about in our last video it's about being aware and catching ourselves and, and knowing when we're overthinking something and analyzing it too much so so yeah it's just that being aware thing and uh, I think being aware of when we do stuff, is, you know, and then changing our direction to make better neural pathways, like I was talking about in the last video, um, that right there, just that technique of constantly being aware and catching yourself, I mean, it, it takes a lot of work each day, but it's like it'll become default, you know, after a while, so, and that's what I try and do, you know, every day is just catch myself if I'm going in that track because the anxiety will go way up if I start to analyze and overthink something to death. Um, but it does get easier, I have to say. <laughs> and here is another one that I just think is so important, and that's journaling. Um, 
I think just writing down your thoughts on paper, um, keeping, you can keep a journal. Um, a lot of times I have these little pads and I'll write my thoughts down on these papers and I'll date them and everything. And I'll keep them in a stack or whatever that I can go back to and read over again. But I just think, I don't know, it just helps getting it out on paper. You know, if we're worried about something or, you know, um, fearful, going over and over something, even the overthinking that I just talked about, writing that down on paper and seeing it in front of you. Because it's hard sometimes to make sense of things in your mind. You know, it just kind of seems like a, a jumbled mess sometimes and you're trying to sort stuff in your mind and it just doesn't work. So it's great to write it down on paper. That's one my dad, uh, my mom journals all the time. But uh, my dad keeps reminding me, like if I'm having a hard time, he says, are you writing it down? I'm like, oh yeah, writing it down. And as soon as I do start writing it down, I automatically start to feel better because it's like you can look at it and read it and then you can rationalize it in your brain more. So like with the overthinking thing, um, if you're having a hard time rationalizing, going over and analyzing something, just write it down of the thing that's bothering you on the paper and you can see it for what it is and it's so much easier to rationalize it and put it into, you know, a compartment in your brain that you're comfortable with that you can let it go. Um, at, le at least that's how it helps me. So, yeah, I just, I totally stand by journaling and I've been doing it for a long time. I go through periods again that... I do it a ton and then I'll do it a little less and then I'll do it more. So, but yeah, that's, I, I'm, I'm not sure you might already do that, Eugenia. I'm not, I'm not sure if you do, but uh, um, um, if you don't do the journaling, that's one thing I do recommend is writing it down. <laughs> now, another one is, uh, and you do this so well, Eugenia. I mean, you do this beautifully <laughs> and that's helping others in need. Um, I just, I just think there's no higher calling in life than helping others in need. And, um, it just helps a person's, you know, it would help your mental state personally helping others in need. It helps the other person's mental state. Um, and then, you know, that can inspire them to want to help others and pay it forward to the next person. And it kind of is like a spider web effect. So you know, that's going to help with anxiety tremendously because you're doing something so positive and constructive and helping others and diverting your attention to, you know, what might be troubling someone else and helping someone else that uh, might not know something that you know, you know. So, so yeah, Eugenia, keep, keep doing your thing, helping others. And um, I know, I'm sure you feel the, the mental benefits from helping others. Um, because I know I've, it's made me feel a million times better helping others, you know, seeing that I can, you know, uplift someone or make someone's day brighter. It just, it's one of the best and healthiest things for your brain. So you keep doing that, Eugenia, and I'll keep doing it and keep spreading the word for, um, to, for other people to maybe take action and start doing that because it'll, it'll help tremendously. <laughs> Here is a big one, I think, and that is control. Um, <laughs> letting go of control in life and circumstances. Um, this is one I, I, I think a lot of people struggle with control. Um, I've always struggled with it to a degree, you know, because I, you know, you want to control everything in, in your life and. You know, you want to just control the outcome of this and, you know, you don't want this person to do that or say that and it's like you want to get them to stop, you know, but, um, you know, it's like you want to control every outcome and, and it creates so much anxiety, you know, and I know that's like a big one for my anxiety and it's been a huge one in my recovery because I, you know, I don't have any control over when my nervous system finishes its healing process. It's different for everybody, you know? And giving up control and accepting where I am at the moment and saying, you know, making a list of the things that I am capable of now and 
making, you know, chipping away, making small efforts towards the goals that, you know, you have for the future and stuff like that. Um, these are the best things we can do for control and we have to just kind of let go of the, of the uh, rest and, you know, let nature take its course, you know, and um, I just think of it as letting God and the universe, you know, guide your path in life, you know, just, you know, there's only so much that we can do in our life and then the rest we have to just let go and let God take over. Um, that's one of the unity things actually I learned is uh, letting go and letting God take over. That's kind of what I do if I don't know what to do. It's like if, if you don't know what to do about something, you don't do anything and you just let it go to God and put it in his hands and he'll take it the rest of the way, you know, and have faith that he is guiding everything just right. Um, and that will help diminish that uh, anxiety big time. It does for me, letting that control go to, over to God and saying, Lord, you are in the driver's seat. <laughs> I, I've done everything I can and, you know, I'm letting you take things the rest of the way. And that helps my anxiety tremendously to know that things are in divine order and they're being led to where they need to be in the end. So that is a huge one that I advocate on. <laughs> that kind of leads me into the next one. While you're doing the control, it is just so important to practice patience because <laughs> Patience is a virtue like everyone talks about and I believe that is totally true. I think that's been giving up control um, and patience have been tremendously hard in recovery, you know, because it's like you're playing the waiting game and you're trying to do as much as you can in life while you wait to finish healing and wait to do everything you want to do and know that it is coming. So it's like having that patience every day, having to pull back, you know, because when you wait for so long, you know, and you want something so bad, it's like, God, I want recovery to be over. I just want to be healed and doing everything. You know, it's, it's like you got to pull back and say, okay, this is where I am today. I'm accepting where I am right now, you know, um, I, I'm doing this now. I'm doing this a little bit more. Um, I'm working towards this goal a little bit, you know, and thinking about those little, you know, milestones um, that you're making progress in every day and just trying to pull back. And, and that helps the anxiety, you know, being patient and focusing on what you're doing right now. Um, because, you know, it's like we're a go, go society, you know, and you know, and, and everybody is zooming around and the cars everywhere and they're doing a million things at once and they're trying to furiously get their life where they want it to be. And then something happens, you know, like my circumstance where I wasn't expecting to go through what I've gone through. And it's like you're kind of forced to do all these things and be patient and let go and have faith and your life just kind of takes a whole different turn <laughs> and you know and trying to practice patience every day is really hard but it it will benefit big time because once again you're being aware of you know I want all this now I want to go out and do it all now you know and then you start kind of getting mad because you know it's like you want your life to go a certain way um, but as soon as you that thought of patience pops in your head, it's like, you know, practice patience and you're like, okay, I'll pull back, you know, I'll accept where I am today. You know, I want to be here, but this is where I am and just continue having patience. So that, that is a big one. And that one, I think, I think most people work on that the rest of their life is trying to be patient with things. So, you know, I think that's just an ongoing work in progress as we all are, you know, we're, we're all, a ongoing work in progress I think every day <laughs> trying to get to where we want to be and you know learning and learning and learning and that's what life is about is it's about learning you know learning from circumstances so but it will get easier and things will get better the more you practice this thing these things so um, that, that's the benefits that I see and that's what I totally believe in so
And uh, one other thing is, um, <laughs> I think we hold ourselves in such a high, to such a high standard. Um, it's like trying to be perfect, I guess. I've always kind of been a perfectionist at things. And I do, unfortunately, sometimes listen to what society thinks I should be doing, which isn't good because we're all individual people, and that'll create a lot of anxiety. If, if you hold yourself to this standard of, well, everybody else is doing this, and, and they're doing that, and you're comparing to what they're doing, you know, which isn't good to compare because, you know, we're, we're individuals, you know, with our own lives and our own paths, and... You know, it's always made me anxious comparing what, you know, what's other people my age doing, you know. Oh, they're doing this, and I probably should be doing that, and oh my gosh, and I'm nowhere. And then you start to, your self-worth is dependent on what other people think and where they're at. And you can't do that at all. That's another thing to be aware of and catch yourself. And saying, nope, I'm comparing, I can't compare. Um, I'm not perfect. I am doing the best I can every single day. You know, I'm a, I'm a great person and you know, and just great thing is just to list all the, all the great things that you know you do and then know, you know that you are and that you love about yourself. Um, and try and stay away from the, uh, the society standard of what everyone thinks that you should be doing, you know, and, 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 you know, it's so hard not to judge yourself because, you know, you can't control what other people are thinking and, um, you know, that's their business. It's like, you know what you're doing in your life and that that's the most important thing, you know, I believe is as long as you're not hurting anyone and you're not hurting yourself, you can live however you want to, you know. There's people that want, you know, to be millionaires or they want to be a CEO of a company or... They want to be a doctor, a lawyer, or, you know, anything. Or there's there's people that just, they want to be a, a Buddhist monk and live in a monastery, you know. And, you know, or there's people, they just want to live as frugally as possible and just get by with as little as possible and, you know, have as much fun as they can. There's people that want to travel the world, you know, and they just, they're not comfortable unless they're traveling all the time, you know. They just don't like to be in one place, so... And that's great, you know, it's just diversity. Life is diversity, so so yeah, just trying trying not to be perfect and meeting society's standards, having such high expectations of ourselves and you know, demeaning ourselves when um, we don't feel like we're meeting those expectations and not comparing to other people and what other people are doing. So those right there, that's going to help a lot with anxiety if we're aware of that and we catch ourselves if we're doing that and um, constantly countering that, you know. Um, so yeah, <laughs> hope all that uh, hope all that made sense, Eugenia. Um, I know I kind of just start talking and I just kind of maybe get off on a tangent, but you know, it's like my brain's just kind of flowing and so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that all makes sense. <laughs> So I hope you liked part two of this video, Eugenia. And uh, yeah, these were fun to make, these uh, two-part videos for mental health and ways to help with anxiety. I know kind of each one of the topics I talked about might be like kind of their own topics to talk about in separate videos, but I feel like, I don't know, I just kind of feel like they all help with anxiety, you know, if we're, um, being aware of all these things and working on them all, they can all help with anxiety. So it's kind of why I try and work on all of them, you know, um, because they've all all helped me uh, tremendously. So, and uh, hopefully they can help you as well if there's some things in here that uh, you might not have known before. So that's why that's why I like doing these. It's it's fun to do and. You know, I, I think it's fun to, you know, help and teach teach other people, you know, things that I've learned and, you know, it's about all about passing on that information to uh, other people and then they can pass it on to the next person and yeah, it's, uh, but uh, anyway, I love you so much, Eugenia, and uh, I'm giving you...
kisses. Mwah. Mwah. And there's some kisses for you, Eugenia. So, and I'm giving you hugs, definitely. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I'm just loving you playing Animal Crossing. That game is just so adorable. I just think it's so cute, <laughs> especially watching, watching you, you know, control your character, walking all over, shaking the trees and collecting stuff and fishing and I just think it's so cute and constructing things when you're constructing things it's it's just really adorable love your island it's really cute and all your villagers that are coming to live on your island and everything I wish I kind of I wish I had that game because I'd make an island too and then we can visit each other's islands that would be that would be just awesome <laughs> but yeah it's just so fun uh, talking to you and stream and watching you play that Eugenia so Anyways, I love you so very much and I hope you're having a good day or a good night. And yeah, I will be talking to you in my next video. So not sure what it's going to be yet, but uh, can't wait to eventually do some vlogs again. I don't know when that'll happen. We'll just have to see how all this lockdown stuff goes. <laughs> but uh Hopefully in the near future it uh, be able to make some vlogs here again because I definitely want to do that Crystal Museum Part 2 because fossils. They have fossils there and everything. It, I was thinking about it this morning when I was getting ready. I'm like, gosh, the Crystal Museum, it kind of reminds me of Blathers and the museum and Animal Crossing and all that, you know, because I know you can set up like fossil exhibits and aquariums and uh, yeah, just a lot of things. So it kind of reminds me of that, you know, like going to see Blathers at the Crystal Museum and seeing the fossil exhibits and all that. So everything is kind of reminding me of Animal Crossing right now. It's kind of funny. So, but uh, anyway, um, love you very much. And I will talk to you in my next video. Okay. Love you, Eugenia. Bye.